When She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, premiered on the Disney Plus streaming service in 2022, it mostly received positive receptions from critics as well as viewers, but was known at the time for being blunt with the social commentary of varying issues on screenwriters' interpretations of the Marvel Cinematic Universe of the time. However, the ending to the series was originally supposed to be much more different than what was depicted. But the speculative scenario is this. Kevin was originally to be a literal representation of Kevin Feige. From information now known, Jessica Gao and Kai Koiro were some of the most vocal proponents of the outrageous and extravagant details of the series. Casual viewers of the series made vocal complaints about the social and political commentary, all themes discussed in the various episodes of the series. But readers of Marvel comics and more series viewers knew that such presentations were actually depicted in the comics. For she-Hulk, on related appearances for her. Jessica Gao later commented when asked about the depictions in the series, and intentionally held the episodes to be as blunt as possible with correlations to the different episodes. In some cases, the acting was also brought out to a slapstick comedic level of interpretation to help dramatize the premise of the series. It was important to remember the overall caricatures on depictions for the series, because in the final episode there was an interesting adaptation which casual audiences were confused with but comic readers on series fans knew about all too well. In the final episode of the series, through events depicted, She-Hulk broke the fourth wall of the show and actually depicted Marvel Studios itself. She desiring to revert to her Jennifer form, but Kevin mentioned the computer graphics team were mostly working on another assignment on his orders, which was later revealed to be Wakanda forever. With further insistence or rather annoyances from She-Hulk, Kevin then reverted her back to Jennifer Walters off-screen. As Jennifer mentioned that was a somewhat anticlimactic maneuver. Jennifer then mentioned all of the complexities of this series and asked Kevin to recall on everything except for a few details. Kevin commented that some of those watching might not understand the consequences of her decision and Kevin complied with her request and later undoing most of the series. Kevin later commented that he had enough of Jennifer's questions and told her to leave. When leaving, Jennifer mentioned her appearance in a future Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, as Kevin said that he would consider such at his own discretion if he desired. When Kevin first appeared, even casual viewers knew that the custom character was an interpretation of Kevin Feige, the man behind the original era of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In particular, Kevin Feige was infamously known for approving or denying requests to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and if he allowed it to be done, you could do whatever within reason at Marvel Studios. If he denied it, then you'd have absolutely no other choice but to comply with his final say at Marvel Studios. Whatever the consensus on Kevin Feige's actions were at Marvel Studios, his reputation at that time was literally absolute. But there were often rumors of underlings making fun of his status in the studios at the time. Jessica Gao originally wanted to have Kevin Feige himself cameo as the knowledge enhanced visual interconnectivity nexus, the literal god of the Marvel Cinematic Universe according to Shiho Kanon. Jessica Gao had the Kevin unit to be responsible for all decisions in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, omnipotent and could change, interpret, destroy, or create literally anything in terms of existence within the Marvel Cinematic Universe instantaneously. Jessica Gao later said this was her impression or interpretation of Kevin Feige's power within Marvel Studios at the time. It was just a joke developed by screenwriters and producers of the show, but as the series took shape within Marvel Studios, the Kevin Feige-based character slowly became more and more important to the series, until it became the core aspect of the final episode. Eventually, the screenwriters made requests for Kevin Feige to make an appearance. While Kevin Feige didn't technically appear in the series, Jessica Gao and the other screenwriters were actually surprised with how much of the Kevin portrayal in the series that Kevin Feige himself was comfortable with. Everyone involved with the She-Hulk still made persistent claims to have Kevin Feige at least voice the Kevin portrayal, as he plainly refused. Knowing not to insist too much, a voice 
voice actor was hired to act as the Kevin portrayal in the series. Eventually, a full cameo appearance was then turned into the computer interface that was later seen. But an interesting fact is that the computer interface had visual features similar to the cap of varying appearances that Kevin Feige almost always wore at events related to the Marvel Cinematic Universe films or shows. Jessica Gao desired a clear reference to Kevin Feige, even if he couldn't technically be in the series, on something of a clear irum to him that casual viewers would be curious about, but serious newers knew what it clearly depicted. After some deliberations, a veiled likeness was allowed, and that end result was what viewers saw at the time. After the series concluded, casual audiences were no doubt confused as to how the series ended and even the entire concept of Kevin was too much for them to simply understand. Details for the series final were some of the most searched on the internet within the United States, and there were complaints about the veiled references in the episode. Series audiences and comic readers knew of the references on innuendos made by the Kevin interface, and thought it was somewhat appropriate to have a technical fourth wall break to explain the post-endgame Marvel Cinematic Universe on the debatable power or influence that Kevin Feige had at Marvel Studios. 